Welcome back to Inside the Standard Library. This time, we're looking at the compact map method. This is similar to the map method, except it unwraps all optional values that are returned by a transformation function and discards any that are nil. Let's go straight over to Xcode. The map part of compact map means that this thing transforms values in a sequence somehow. But the compacting part means that it unwraps optionals and discards any that are nil. So, if you have an array of strings like this, let score strings equals string 100, string 85, string fish. We could convert those into an array of integers like this. Let score ints equals score strings dot compact map int dollar zero. Then print score ints. The mapping transformation will convert each string into an optional integer, giving us optional 100, optional 85, and nil, because fish isn't a valid integer. But then the compacting step kicks in unwraps the two optional numbers and discards the final nil. This works great everywhere Swift creates optionals. For example, creating a URL from a string is a failable initializer, so we could use compact map there. Let strings equals apple.com, hackingyourswift.com. Let URLs equals strings.compactmap, URL, string dollar zero, print URLs. We already covered the map method of sequences, and compact maps only a little bit harder thanks to that compacting step, where it unwraps optionals and discards any that are nil. Of course, we should make sure our method is able to handle a throwing transformation function, so we'll be using throws and rethrows again. Let's try and write it ourselves. Extension sequence, public func compact map two, generic over t, takes a transformation closure of an element from the array, returns an optional t, and the whole thing returns an array of t. Now remember the transformation function here will return optionals. That's why a compacting step is important. Inside there, we'll make a new result array of t, then loop over all items in self and say if let transformed equals transform item, result.append transformed, and finally return result. Just like with map, we really need that to accept a throwing transformation closure. So we'll modify it to this. We'll add throws, rethrows, and try. Okay, that's enough for our solution. I think our compact map replacement is working just fine. Let's take a look at the equivalent code in the Swift standard library. Compact map is stored in sequence algorithms.swift. So let's open that, press command F, and track it down. You can see it immediately calls a slightly different method, underscore compact map. This is actually just below, and there's a helpful comment there explaining why this has been done. The implementation of flat map accepting a closure with an option result, factored out into a separate function in order to be used in multiple overloads. Now the code here says flat map because that's an older name for compact map. Plus there's actually a typo in there, a separate functions. If you're watching this, go and file a bug report on the Swift Jira. They'll be grateful for your help. Obviously, please check someone else has not already filed such a report. Uh, quite a few folks might watch this video before you. So it uses generics like element of results rather than a single letter like T. It uses throws and rethrows. It runs all the items through the transform and it appends them to a result array as it goes. This is pretty much identical to our code. We nailed it. Out of curiosity and nothing else, let's take a quick look at the other place that calls the underscore compact map method. It's in migration support.swift, which immediately tells you this is about handling older versions of Swift. Again, let's command F our way to compact map and you'll see it occurs twice. Both of these were deprecated in Swift 4.1 and will go away in the near future, at which point I expect the underscore compact map method will also go away because no one else uses it. Hopefully, if you come back in six months or so, this code will look a lot simpler. Okay, that wraps up our video. I hope you're feeling pleased that our version of the code is the same as Swift's. There's no bonus magic happening here. And this is gonna happen a few other times in this series. And every time, I hope it reminds you once again that the Swift standard library is just regular Swift code that we could write ourselves if we wanted to. And now it's over to you. What did you learn in this video and how could you apply it to your own code? Leave a comment below with your answer and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I publish lots of videos like this one to help you build your skills as an iOS developer.